Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus 5G. You have probably heard of this phone since this was actually announced last year. But it was only a few weeks ago when it hit the global market. And I've been using it extensively as my main phone for a few weeks as well. Let me tell you that using this phone feels great. Everything feels fast. And if you don't mind the kind of steep asking price of this phone, you're getting a great overall device that should last for at least a few years, especially now it supports 5G. But just like most Note 11 devices, this phone might not feel like it's enough to satisfy the need for an upgrade for those coming from the Redmi Note 10 Pro. And considering Poco F3 is still being sold at a relatively affordable price, the Note 11 Pro Plus is looking more like a specialty device in comparison to its siblings. But then again, this is not a bad phone, nor a bad deal, considering how other manufacturers are still on the more expensive side. That said, here's what I think of the Note 11 Pro Plus right after this short message from today's sponsor. CityKey Offers specializes in delivering cheap and legitimate software and game codes. If you ever need a Windows 10 Pro or a Microsoft Office key, you can buy one at a very cheap price. To do so, just visit CityKeyOffer.com. Search for Windows 10 and choose a suitable copy for you. But in my case, I always go for a professional copy. Before making a payment, make sure to type in the RC20 code for an exclusive 30% off discount. After that, you can choose your preferred payment method. You will receive the code via an email that redirects you to the website of CD Key Offer, and from there, you can get your Windows 10 key. Since my Windows 10 copy is already activated, I just can simply change my product key to the new one that I just bought. If you need a Microsoft Office key, the steps are pretty much the same. Just make sure to type in the RC20 code for an exclusive 30% off discount. CD Key Offer provides permanently valid keys with 30 days of return and exchange period. You can check out more deals in the video description below. So starting with the design, it's the familiar squared look and frame from the Note 11 series. The back is protected by Gorilla Glass 5. Although the frame feels like plastic, the construction of this phone feels solid in every corner. It also supports IP53 rating for splash and water resistance, and at 204 grams, it's surprisingly not that heavy. It is a bit bulky, but not too heavy even with the included plastic case. You can get this phone in green and purple, but the black color that I have sports a matte finish in the back that sometimes looks like gray at certain angles. Considering I've been getting bored with black phones, this is actually a nice touch to see. Since this is a Xiaomi phone, the other features are still here. Like the expandable storage, albeit in hybrid form, the headphone jack up top that actually sounds better than regular jacks at this price range, as well as NFC and infrared port. The stereo speakers are also making a comeback, but with the JBL tuning on the side. I can definitely hear the tuning made by JBL here, but it's not as noticeable as the ones found on the Poco X3 GT. I mean, it's still loud, clear, and clear of distortions, but the bass and stereo effect from JBL have been toned down a little bit. But what I'm more surprised to hear is the jack up top. It's way better than most mid-range phones I've tested in the past. By far, the LG V20 and Samsung Note 9's jack have been the best ones I've seen. Now, this phone sits just right behind that Note 9. Up front, the story is pretty much the same as the predecessor, at least on paper. It's still 6.67 inch Super AMOLED with 120 inch refresh rate, but it's a bit brighter at 700 nits SDR and up to 1200 nits in HDR. So yes, you can watch HDR videos on Netflix and YouTube without a hitch. I also have no complaints regarding the outdoor readability of this phone, including the way auto brightness consistently works whether I'm in a dark or bright environment. And for those who are keen on their display quality, the Note 11 Pro Plus seems to produce better color reproduction than its predecessor. As for the consistency of the 120Hz refresh on this device, the Dimensity 920 chip has been doing its job excellently. I understand that some of you might be a bit skeptical about the use of a Dimensity chip, but compared to the predecessor Snapdragon 732G, this is a significant leap in overall performance. I mean, if your priority is better general performance and you're okay with most games playing relatively smoothly, for the most part, there is no reason for you to hate this chip. The battery isn't a problem either. The 4500 mAh may be a downgrade, but the standby time and operation time of the Note 11 Pro Plus have been incredible for me. I mostly use the phone with mobile data and hotspot turned on, and I can still squeeze the battery until 10 pm. And when I'm on Wi Fi all day, I average 6 hours of screen time, and if I don't use the phone too much, I still have around 60% to use for the next day. 
But the highlight here is the mind-blowing 120 watts charger. It's 120 watts and it comes free in the box. And since this is a high power charger, you may notice the brick actually being heavier than the phone itself. But regardless, Xiaomi claims that this phone can go up to 100% in 15 minutes. But as for my testing, I was able to go to full from zero in 18 minutes. Still, that's incredibly fast. And if you happen to always charge this phone with some battery left, you can expect the charging time to be much faster. And if your concern is heat, you shouldn't be since the phone gets warm to the touch just as much as when playing a game for an extended period. As for MIUI, it's weird to see this phone running on MIUI 12.5 based on Android 11 instead of the newer MIUI 13. But on the flip end, this version feels stable with little to no hiccups during my testing time. Well, except during its first boot up wherein I was met with a few system errors that went away after confirming them all together. What I noticed between 12.5 and 13 is that notifications arrival seems to be timely on the latest version, meaning I'm still experiencing late notifications with this phone. So once the update comes out, expect a new video very soon. And finally, the cameras. The Note 11 Pro Plus still carries the same optics as its predecessor, meaning it still has a 16 megapixel selfie camera, a 108 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro. Xiaomi listed out the 2 megapixel depth sensor, but we all know it's not that important in the grand scheme of things. It's also worth noting that the 11 Pro Plus is the only Note 11 phone that allows for up to 4K recording, so if you want best video quality out of a Note 11 device, you have to spend for this phone. Now the real deal between this phone and its predecessor is the way their respective chipsets handle post-processing. In the case of Dimensity 920, it's almost as good as the Snapdragon 732G. With photos, all look good to my eyes. It feels like it's hard to get a bad photo with this kind of setup. Although extreme low light conditions can make this phone's night mode struggle a little bit, it's still serviceable most of the time. In terms of video, this phone can produce very good video quality, and I think MediaTek needs to do only a bit of tweaking to fully take advantage of the camera's capabilities. I mean, I wish they put some kind of stabilization when recording in 4K or make the HDR effect a little less cartoony. It's those little things. For now, the performance of the cameras is very good in my opinion. I don't mind buying this phone if this is the kind of quality I'm getting. So overall, the Redmi Note 11 Pro Plus is definitely recommendable. I just don't expect it to sell like hotcakes given the pricing and upgrades you're getting. I'm not saying that you should buy this phone immediately, but rather take the time to scope the market and see what's the best phone for your budget. This might be the best chance to look at last year's devices as they are still available and at lower prices too. And in some ways, those older phones are better than this one. You just have to choose which pros and which cons you want to live with. That's it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and drop a sub or like if you feel like supporting the channel. And until the next one, stay safe. Also, shout out to you Angel from the Facebook community. Hope to see you soon.